This video is made possible by Skillshare. Premium memberships begin around $10 a month, but for the first 200 people to sign up with a link in the description, you can get two months of Skillshare for free. Next up, let's compare gasoline engines versus electric motors and see how the differences result in different driving experiences. Gasoline engines are reciprocating engines where pistons move up and down in different cylinders. They in turn rotate a crankshaft that converts their vertical motion into rotational motion. This led to early internal combustion cars being very rough with high levels of vibration. But as more cylinders were introduced, greater precision in machining was available and advances in engine mounts and dampers were made, this wasn't much of an issue. But in comparison, the electric motor doesn't reciprocate. Instead, it operates in a smooth, circular motion more akin to a jet engine than a car engine. There is much more input lag in a gasoline engine. Hit the accelerator and a cable or a fly-by-wire mechanism tells the engine to open the throttle bodies. This allows the engine to ingest more air, which is measured by the oxygen sensors, and directs the engine to inject a proportional amount of fuel. This air-fuel mixture is then compressed and ignited. In contrast, an EV receives an electrical signal and almost immediately begins to create rotational motion. In new efforts to be more efficient, internal combustion engines are getting smaller and compensate with turbochargers, which adds another layer of input lag. There have been deep levels of research and development in recent decades to increase power output and also efficiency. Innovations like VTEC, or variable valve timing with electronic lift, direct injection, where fuel is injected directly into the cylinders, and recently variable compression engines have all moved the needle slightly for the internal combustion car. The story is much simpler for electric cars, where designs feature alternating current or direct current, induction or permanent magnets. Sure, there will continue to be enhancements, but the technological advantage that the big internal combustion makers have enjoyed will be largely neutralized. The electric motor really levels the playing field. Electric motors also create much more power per weight than internal combustion engines and make driving each wheel independently possible for the first time. All-wheel drive Teslas have two motors, one for the front wheels and one for the rear wheels. They don't need to route power from front to back from a single engine. Cars like the Acura NSX actually have two independent motors for each of the front two wheels to give the car all-wheel drive. This is advantageous because in turns, the outboard wheels have a longer distance to travel than the inboard wheels. This is achieved through a differential, but EVs can have some pretty major advantages here. The attribute about electric motors you've probably heard most about is their instant torque. To understand what this means, let's look at hypothetical horsepower and torque curves as a function of RPM for both an electric motor and an internal combustion engine. The first thing you'll notice is that the EV torque curve rises up to near its maximum output immediately at zero RPM. In contrast, the gasoline engine doesn't really start delivering its torque output until about 1500 RPM, and it will continue to rise until it gets near its max output and begin to fall off. The EV torque curve starts off high until a certain RPM point where it starts to taper off. This is precisely why cars have transmissions. In the case of the gasoline car, the range where the engine output is optimized is limited, and a five or six or now even nine speed transmission allows the car to continue to speed up while keeping the engine in this peak RPM range. In contrast, EVs usually just have a single speed gear reduction. You'll notice the electric motor doesn't just keep its max power output all the way to redline. It actually starts to drop off as well. To get the best real world idea of how these two power plants differ, Let's take a look at a comparison that Motor Trend did back in 2017. They pitted a Tesla Model S P100D with ludicrous mode against an Audi RS7 performance model in a drag race. So let's break this down. The Tesla jumps out to an early lead due to its instant torque being fed to all four wheels. This lead only continues to grow as the RS7 finally enters its power sweet spot, but is forced to make shift after shift to keep it there. Then at the tail end of the race, the RS7 is actually catching up and the Tesla's lead shrinks. This is the quintessential difference between quickest and fastest. Quickest is the car that reaches its top speed first, while fastest is the one that will go, well, the fastest. You might be thinking, this sounds like an EV flaw, but there's actually a decent solution to this. Just get a two or three speed transmission, or better yet, have one fixed gear ratio for the front motor and a different one for the back. This might very well be what Tesla will do for their 2020 Roadster. So now that you're a master of engines, motors, and aerodynamics, let's talk top speed. There are a few limiting factors that will determine your top speed. 
One is how fast the engine can spin and how low the lowest gear ratio is. So even if you have 2000 horsepower, the car would be gearing limited to this speed. The second limitation is power output. So even if you have a 10 speed transmission capable of reaching 300 miles an hour, your top speed will be limited by the forces acting on the car. Another limitation is the design of the tires. Cars tires are spinning very fast at max speeds and you'll need special tires with super high speed ratings to hold up to those extreme conditions. If we look at a force body diagram, we have the engine or motor providing a forward force. And we have two forces acting against the car, the rolling resistance and the air drag. When these two forces are equal and opposite to the maximum force provided by the engine or motor, the car has reached its maximum speed. Rolling resistance is a function of the contact patch of the tires, the mass of the car, and should be pretty similar between internal combustion and electric cars. The Bugatti Chiron tops the scales at about 4,400 pounds, and the 2020 Tesla Roadster with its long range batteries should be pretty similar as well. Aerodynamics is where these two cars really differ, with a 0.35 drag coefficient for the Chiron and an amazing 0.22 for the 2020 Roadster. The Chiron's relatively high drag coefficient is due to its 8 liter engine's incredible thirst for air and its equal need for cooling with 10 radiators. Supercars aren't all about the lowest drag coefficients though, because they need special aero spoilers and body panels to provide enough downforce to offset the lifting forces at high speeds. The car's frontal area, drag coefficient, and air density factor into the air resistance. But with a squared value, the velocity is the biggest contributor. If you double your speed, you'll have four times the air resistance. This is why aerodynamics are so important for supercars. To see how the 2020 Roadster can achieve its top rated speed of 250 miles an hour, let's do some calculations. Let's assume that the Roadster motors have a max speed of 18,000 RPM. With 21 inch rims, 325, 30, 21 tires, the total wheel diameter is about 28 inches. Multiplying that by pi gives us a circumference of about seven and a half feet. This means the wheels will spin 703 times in a mile. Multiply that by the car's speed in miles per hour, divide by 60, and you'll get wheel revolutions per minute. If we look at the Tesla Model S, which has a fixed gear reduction of 9.7 to 1, the max speed would be 157 miles per hour. For the Roadster to achieve 250 miles per hour, the gear reduction would have to be reduced from 9.6 to around 6. If you're wondering why all EVs don't just use lower gear ratios, well, that's because of a phenomenon called mechanical advantage. Imagine you're trying to lift a 10 pound load attached to a rope around a single pulley. If you pull down on your end of the rope two feet, you'll have to apply 10 pounds of force to lift the 10 pound weight two feet. This represents a one-to-one -one mechanical advantage. Now instead, if you added a second pulley, attach the weight to it, and pull down two feet with 10 pounds of force, you could now pull 20 pounds of weight, but it would only travel one foot. This represents a two to one mechanical advantage. Gears in a reduction set work using the same principle. And so the greater the gear reduction is, the lower the top speed, but the greater the torque down to the wheels. So like all of engineering, there's a trade-off that engineers have to optimize for their use case. For the 2020 Roadster and all future EV supercars, it's likely that they'll have different gearing ratios for different motors. For the front motor, they can use a nine to one ratio like previous cars to provide greater torque and performance for low speed. For the rear motor, it's more likely they'll use a five or six to one ratio to allow higher maximum speeds. So looking at the broad picture, you can see that EVs are superior to internal combustion engines in pretty much every way. The one caveat is the lower energy storage of today's EV batteries. This leads to greater weight, which will continue to drop as further advancements are made. There are more EV supercars coming online, like the Rimac C2, that are putting some of these concepts into practice. While most will be very low production, handmade and very expensive, the Tesla Roadster 2020 should prove to be the biggest bargain in supercar history. It will outperform pretty much everything out there and cost less than most Ferraris and Lamborghinis. We know there's a lot of physics and engineering to digest in this video, but as YouTubers, that's only half the equation. To make videos like this, we are constantly trying to learn more about writing, animating, and video editing. And that's where Skillshare comes in. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 22,000 classes in videography, productivity, photography, and more. Imagine our surprise when we saw classes on Skillshare taught by some of our favorite YouTubers, 
like Kurzgesagt and Polymatter. Their classes on Adobe After Effects are at the top of our to-do list in order to learn and further grow this channel. So if there is some passion or side hustle you've always wanted to learn more about, make 2018 your year and try Skillshare at the link skl.sh slash 2bitdavinci.